In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. Dear friends, I join Monsignor Greg Gordon and our Deacon Rick, extending a very warm welcome to all of you as we begin this Lenten season together. We stand in the presence of our blessed Savior, asking God to bless our journey as we near the holy season of Easter. Grant, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting this campaign of Christian service, so that as we take up battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with weapons of self-restraint through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your hearts, not your garments, and return to the Lord your God. For gracious and merciful is he, slow to anger, rich in kindness and relenting in punishment. Perhaps he will again relent and leave behind him a blessing, offerings and libations for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, proclaim a fast, call an assembly, gather the people, Notify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom quit his room and the bride her chamber. Between the porch and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, spare, O Lord, your people, and make not your heritage a reproach with the nations ruling over them. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? Then the Lord was stirred to compassion and concern for his land and took pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin, who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Working together then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in an acceptable time I heard you, and on the day of salvation I helped you. Behold, now is a very acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right is doing, so that your almsgiving may be secret. 
and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on street corners so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door and pray to your Father in secret and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you may not appear to be fasting except to your Father who is hidden, and your Father who sees what is hidden will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord. Mr. Pat Williams is a basketball Hall of Famer, Senior Vice President of the Orlando Magic. For the past 50 years, Williams has been in the upper level management for teams in Chicago, Atlanta, and Philly, including the Orlando Magic, which he co-founded in 1987. He's now 80 years young. Mr. Williams and his wife, Ruth, are parents of 19 children, including 14 adopted sons and daughters, now ranging in age from 21 to 35. In addition to his coaching career, Pat Williams has been a prolific author, authoring over 100 books and articles. He's also a highly sought after speaker still addressing thousands of executives and nonprofit leaders across the globe. It was in 2004 that Pat Williams wrote a wonderful book called Secrets from the Mountain. That book contains a powerful story that I want to share with you today. In this book, Pat Williams describes one of the highest peaks in the French Alps located on the border between Switzerland and France. As mountain climbers from all over the world attempt to reach the summit of the mountain, they have an opportunity to rest halfway up the mountain at a French inn called the Inn Mediocre, the French word meaning halfway place. Climbers stop to rest at this famous refuge. They stock up on supplies, they seek shelter from storms, arriving oftentimes wet and cold and exhausted from the climb. There they peel off their soaking boots and socks, they jettison their climbing equipment, and they enter the warmth and the welcome environment of the Mediocre Inn. They're greeted by staff, and an enticing environment. Roaring fire, plates of goulash, cups of cocoa. They're revitalized by warm conversation, joviality, and storytelling. And within hours, they doze off into a restful slumber, preparing to resume the journey to the summit. But few do. Williams reports that only a fraction of the climbers who taste the comfort of the inn ever resume the journey. Excuses abound. I've done more than most. I have bested my personal best. I have leg cramps or the view from the inn 
is good enough. A full 80% remain at the mediocre inn, never to resume the climb. Only 20% put on their equipment and head back into the elements. It is somewhat ironic that the name of the inn is mediocre, a word literally translated meaning halfway point, but the double entendre can't be overlooked. Webster defines the word mediocre as neither very good or very bad, but the Oxford thesaurus lists a number of synonyms, including undistinguished, uninspired, unimaginative, and second-rate. Mediocrity is always the enemy of the church. Mediocrity is the arch nemesis of the spiritual life. It was just eight years ago, at the beginning of Lent, that then Pope Benedict wrote a meditation that is as meaningful today as when it was penned. He wrote, and I quote, the Christian life consists in scaling the mountain to meet God, and then coming back down, bearing the love and the strength we draw from him, so as to serve our brothers and sisters with God's love. But there is a catch. In scaling God's holy mountain, we're often bogged down with worldly cares or religious routine. We are thwarted by a lack of discipline, overwhelmed by busyness, beguiled by temptations and habits of sin, overwhelmed by priorities, softened by self-indulgence. In too many instances, we find ourselves lazing or languishing in the spiritual in mediocre. I say to you, dear friends, that this holy season is a time for renewal and repentance, a time for recharging, rebooting, reclaiming the spiritual discipline necessary as we climb God's holy mountain. Fasting, penance, works of charity, all designed with a common purpose, summed up in the words of the old Eucharistic prayer, that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him. Lent is a time of reordering the spiritual life, removing those obstacles that keep us from loving the Lord fully and serving others with hearts that are genuine and true. More frequent reception of the Eucharist, a long overdue confession, spiritual reading, meditation on the scripture, intentional healing of broken relationships, resolving to gain greater control of our lives, carrying out hidden works of mercy, all ways to resume the climb to meet him who is, in the words of Augustine, closer to us than we are to ourselves. May Lent 2021 give you the grace and the grit to leave the comfort of the mediocre inn and to serve the Lord with all your heart. May your heart be lightened, your soul refreshed, as we set aside the heavy, damp, uncomfortable baggage that has weighed us down and prevented us from attaining our goal. Our efforts are worth it, and the benefits are out of this world. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly ask God our Father that he be pleased to bless with the abundance of his grace these ashes 
which will be placed on our heads in penitence. And so we pray. O God, who are moved by acts of humility and respond with forgiveness to works of penance, lend your merciful ear to our prayers and in your kindness, pour out the the grace of your blessing on your servants who are marked with these ashes, that as they follow the Lenten observances, they may be worthy to come with mind made pure to celebrate the Paschal mystery of your Son, through Christ our Lord. Let us now pray for one another and for the needs of the entire church. For the church, that this Lent will be a season when we will turn back to God with a sincere and contrite heart. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are poor and destitute, that they will find us generous and compassionate in our support of Catholic Charities of Southern Nevada. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are ill, particularly for those with the coronavirus, that God will heal the sick, protect the vulnerable from the virus, strengthen healthcare workers, and make the vaccines effective. We pray to the Lord. For peace, that God will inspire world leaders to take bold steps to end violence and promote justice through dialogue and understanding. Let us pray to the Lord. For the parishioners of Guardian Angel Cathedral for whom this Mass is being offered, and for the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Father in heaven, look with favor upon us as we gather in your name and hear the many prayers we bring before you on this holy day. Grant us hearts that are pure, lives that are filled with love, and hands poured out in service, most especially to the poorest and the neediest in our midst. We ask these things in faith through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness, we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. 
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray now, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we solemnly offer the annual sacrifice for the beginning of Lent, we entreat you, O Lord, that through works of penance and charity, we may turn away from harmful pleasures and cleanse from our sins may become worthy to celebrate devoutly the passion of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God, Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For Though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us, you change our hearts and prepare them for reconciliation. Even more by your spirit, you move human hearts that enemies may speak again to each other, adversaries join hands, and peoples seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O oh Lord, that hatred is overcome by love, Revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. <clears throat> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, mere unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with each one of you. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received sustain us, O Lord, that our Lenten fast may be pleasing to you and be for us a healing remedy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us humbly ask God's blessing. May the Father of mercies bless you in every way and grant you peace all the days of your lives. May Christ free your hearts from fear and anxiety and strengthen your hearts in his love. May you walk in his ways, knowing what is right and good, until you see our Father face to face. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.